um, no matter what the consequences, Putin seems determined to take Russia on this path. Is there anything that could really put Putin in check? Well, if the Ukrainians keep advancing successfully, as they've just done, as your reporter said, it's going to be more and more difficult uh, for the Russian military uh, to even hold on to what it has. Uh, they don't even control the four areas that they've now annexed. So I think that's the only thing. But of course, we have to weigh against that, those threats that we also heard from Putin yesterday, uh, that if Mother Russia is attacked, and that now includes uh, these territories that that in fact are part of Ukraine, then Russia could use any means possible. And of course, we've had veiled threats about nuclear weapons too. Right, and so that very strong message, and really you look at the videotape that was in Matthew's uh, reporting, I mean, just the symbolism and the imagery of Putin in this grand room with all of these people, but this great distance between he and these, you know, dignitaries or, um, you know, the Russian elite, as Matthew was explaining. I mean, what is the psychology? What is going on there? And the strength of his messaging, and then seemingly among the audiences that are cheering him on. Well, you know, I watched the whole thing, including the 20 minutes that they all had to wait in that room till he came in. Yeah. And I, and compared to other speeches he's given, for instance, when he annexed Crimea, they actually didn't look very enthusiastic. They looked bored. Uh, they were kind mm. of nervously looking around. They gave him, you know, the requisite applause. But I think for a lot of those people, they're questioning, you know, what is he doing? Uh, Russia is now not doing well in the war. Uh, it's lost much of its global economic position. Uh, it's completely, it's a pariah, at least in the West, although not in the, in the rest of the world. And he's leaving a Russia that's going to be weakened and deglobalized. So you, you wonder how long they're going to continue supporting this. Right. So all of this was happening. We're looking at this video again. While that Russian withdrawal was taking place in the very area where, you know, Putin has been boasting of this annexation. But then internally, what do you suppose he is thinking and feeling when his own folks are now surrounded by Ukrainian uh, uh, troops in the very area that he claimed he's annexing, but then, you know, this uh, show of weakness by retreating? No, I think there's a cognitive dissonance there. Somehow he's, I mean, he projected confidence yesterday. Somehow I don't think he's accepted that he's actually losing. And we don't know how much he really knows about the situation on the battlefield. Although mm. he's now being criticized by people who wanted him to be tougher and people openly criticizing the performance of the Russian military. So this is why he's now uh, enacted this partial mobilization that's going very badly. People are running away. But I think he somehow thinks that if he has enough, if he pours enough troops and he can reverse this. Uh, but I think he doesn't fully understand how ineffectively the Russian military has performed. Still, it's very dangerous and volatile for everyone, right? Because Putin said in his speech yep. that there was a precedent for using nuclear weapons, and he referenced the U.S. in Japan. Here's the White House reaction to that. I've been clear myself, President Biden has been clear, our administration has been clear, that there is a risk, given all of the loose talk and the nuclear saber rattling by Putin, uh, that he would consider this. And we've been equally clear about what the consequences would be. We have communicated that directly to the Russians. We do not presently see indications about the imminent use of nuclear weapons. So how, how seriously do you see Putin's threats? I think you do have to take it very seriously. Um, he would be breaking a taboo, a 77-year-old taboo, but um, uh, uh, you have to take it seriously, but I don't think you have to exaggerate it. He's using this to try and intimidate everyone and to get the United States to tell the Ukrainians to give up and mm -hmm. sit down and cede all of this territory to Russia. That's why he's really doing it. And uh, it's not entirely clear whether he can just decide on his own to launch even a tactical nuclear weapon. There are other steps there. Um, and I do think that the administration has sent very s strong warnings to him. But we can't discount it altogether. And that leaves us, you know, in a more insecure position. Angela Stent, uh, thank you so much.